A warm welcome to Archiversity Online Lectures. In this lecture, I am going to explain you the concept of capital structure and the underlying assumptions of a capital structure, then the capital structure theories, then how the capital structure is going to help managers to take investment decisions. More importantly, decisions related to financing mix of an organization. In the context of capital structure theories, the sources of finance for a firm is classified into two. One is the debt and the second one is equity. So debt is a, the borrowed funds or you can say what the organization owe or borrow from outsiders and equity is own funds. The concept of capital structure deals with how effectively the firm manages the mix between debt and equity. We call this as capital structure mix or say financing mix. In the sense, in while making a decision related to capital structure or a financing mix, what proportion of a debt to be used and what proportion of a equity. And if the debt is used in a total capital structure, what is going to happen? In the sense, the outcome is measured in terms of value of a firm that is indicated as a V and second one is the overall cost of capital that is KO. In the sense, if in a capital structure or in a financing mix, if debt is used in an equity, then what is going to happen with the value of the firm, whether the value of a firm increases or value of the firm decrease or value of the firm remain constant. Similarly, what will be the impact on overall cost of a capital? That is whether the overall cost of a capital will decrease or overall cost of capital will increase or overall cost of capital remains constant. Now the point here is why is that when a debt is used into capital of a company, why the value of the firm gets affected, whether it is increased, decreased or a constant, why actually this will get affected. You have to understand one another concept here that is the cost of debt and cost of equity. In the real business context, cost of debt is considered to be cheaper or lower than cost of equity. In the sense, the cost of debt is lower than cost of equity. The question is that why is that the cost of debt is lower than cost of equity? Because the investor's expectation related to cost of debt, that is uh, expected return, expected return of debt holders or a bond uh, holders is less. Then why this is less? Mean debt is considered as a as less risky when comparing with the equity. Now then why it is considered as a less risk mean? Because debt is an obligation from the perspective of the company and on which fixed uh, time period payments are made in the form of interest and at the end of the term period then the principal amount is repaid and in addition to this many a times debt is a secured loan or secured lending. So because of these reasons the cost of debt will be cheaper when comparing with the cost of equity. So in such scenario the organizations try to borrow money in the form of a debt and use it in a capital structure or a financing mix and try to increase the value of firm. Now in a capital structure decisions when we are talking about increasing the value of the firm the capital structure decisions are related to only financing decisions. That means how much of amount or what proportion to be invested in a debt and what proportion to be invested in an equity. This is what the decision that uh, we make in a capital structure decisions. Capital structure decisions is no way related with the investment decisions. In the sense, in capital structure, we will not pay any attention on what kind of a project we are making investment. Only our attention is on how the financing mix should be, what proportion of a debt and equity should be. Now in capital structure, the assumptions that we make is, one is that the earnings before interest tax are also called as operating profit. This remains constant. That means irrespective of your uh, financing mix, whether uh, you invest 80% in a debt, 20% in equity, or 50% in debt and 50% uh, in equity, your EBIT, that is operating profit, remains constant. This is one of the uh, major assumptions 
of uh, capital structure. Second is that there are no corporate taxes. We uh, make an assumption in a world that the no corporate taxes uh, exist. But in a latter, we give exemption for this. And when, while we're discussing a few theories where we also include the corporate tax. The next is that the cost of debt is cheaper than cost of equity. This is another assumption that we make with related to the capital structure decisions. Now in understanding the capital structure, there are different schools of a thought which are in support and which are in against those we call as a theories. Popular capital structure theories are one is a net income approach. So net income approach is a relevant, we say that a relevant theory in the sense the assumption of net income approach is that if debt is used in a capital structure or in a financing mix, if debt is used, then value of firm will increase and overall cost of capital will decrease. So this is assumption or uh, uh, argument made by the net income approach. Then the second theory which we are going to discuss is net operating income approach also called as net operating income NOI approach. So here irrespective of your capital structure makes the value of firm and overall cost of capital remains constant. So that means you are by changing your capital structure by changing your uh, capital structure mix you are not going to create any value. So this is called as a relevant theory. Then we have a third approach called as a traditional approach. Traditional approach says that there is an optimum capital structure mix in the sense by using debt in a capital structure to a certain extent the company can minimize its overall cost of a capital, uh, decrease minimize cost of capital and increase value of a firm. But after a certain level then the overall cost of a capital and the value of a firm is not going to get affected. Sometimes the cost of a capital, overall cost of a capital and may increase and the value of firm may decrease. Then we have a fourth theory which is popularly known as M and M that is uh, Modi, Gliani and Miller approach. So in a Modi, Gliani and Miller approach, they propose two different uh, theories. One is without tax and another is with corporate tax. So without corporate tax is similar to irrelevant and with corporate tax this is a uh, relevant. The hypothesis that uh, Modigland and Miller makes that the debt which a company borrows have a advantage of tax benefit or also called as a tax shield. So because of a tax shield the value of the firm may increase. So these are the four theories which uh, we are going to discuss in uh, capital structures and uh, uh, every theory have the same assumptions and there are one or two additional assumptions that we discuss at the time of discussing each theory. So this is all about an introduction to the capital structure theory. Thank you. Thank you for watching. In my next lecture, I'm going to explain you what are the different lexicals that uh, uh, we use in a capital structure context. Thank you.